Now continuing to the second part of the video, um, this is basically um, covering anemia and bleeding disorders. Now anemia, just a bit of extra information, is when hemoglobin levels in males are between, well, normal levels are between 13 and 18. So anemia would be less than 13 in males and for females it's 11.5 to 16.5, so anything less than 11.5. Uh, would classify as anemic in women. These are in grams per deciliter. Now, in anemia, just like in any other condition, we're going to ask since when they've been having, since when they've been diagnosed with anemia, if they're taking any medications for it, what medications they're taking, what dose, etc. This could be in the form of iron tablets and so on. And if they've had any severe bleeding episode, now this could be general severe bleeding episode, like if they got a cut, fell down somewhere, got a cut and has bled severely, and also especially in any dental treatment, which is why it's also sometimes important to ask separately if they've had any dental extractions done in the past. Um, and if there was any excessive bleeding um, after that extraction. If they've had an extraction in the past, everything was fine, no excessive bleeding, it's usually a good indication that the patient will be alright after we uh, go through a dental extraction with them. And for in female patients, we can ask also if they uh, have any heavy period. Now, in anemic patients, um, uh, they, they sometimes do have other clinic, clinical presentations like glossitis, angular colitis, and ulcers. So, uh, of course, we're not going to be asking the patient if they suffer from glossitis. We're going to ask the patient if they've noticed any irritation or burning sensation of their tongue, um, if they have noticed any irritation or burning sensation on the corners of their mouth, or if they've noticed any burning sensation, uh, or if they've noticed any ulcers in their mouth, uh, any ulcers that don't heal especially. Um, so these are the three kind of clinical conditions we can observe in patients who are anemic. Now it may also be a case that the patient doesn't know they're anemic and they come with uh, glossitis, angular chelitis, um, or ulcers, and then one of the causes could be anemia. So it's, it's also, also important to keep that in mind. Um, now the significance of this is that if, for example, there is an anemic patient if we have any invasive procedures, we're going to first consult the GP. It's not a case that we're going to refer the patient to the hospital. Just make sure that the GP, we consult the GP before we carry out anything like extractions or gingivectomies or anything where there may be a bit of excessive bleeding. And in all, if we do carry out the procedure, make sure we use local hemostatic measures like squeezing the socket, putting the cellulose in the socket, suturing, all of those local hemostatic measures in anemic patients. Uh, so that's for anemia. Now coming to bleeding disorders. Now bleeding disorders in this exam could most likely be von Willebrand disease or hemophilia. Now um, we have to ask the patient of course since when, if they're taking any medications which they usually aren't, um, or have there been any complications in any dental treatment. Uh, because of their bleeding disorders, which is obviously then excessive bleeding. Now the patient may say, may not know they have a bleeding disorder, and this has happened in the DTP before, but the patient did say that they had, and when you go through the dental history part, they'll say they've had an extraction. If you ask them if everything went fine, they may say no, there was a lot of bleeding. Now a good follow-up question in that case would be to say, okay, um, does anyone in your family bleed excessively? So they may have a father or mother who uh, has von Willebrand disease or hemophilia and the child just has not been diagnosed with it. So th it could be a good indication in which case we're going to refer to the GP. GP will get some tests done. But if the patient already knows they have a bleeding disorder, it's just better to ask if anyone else in the family has it. Um, now what's important in this, the significance of this is that if there's any extractions, any invasive procedures, anything like that, like gingivectomy extraction, anything which involves raising a flap, it needs to be done in the hospital. It's not something that we can do as a general dental practitioner. So the patient will need to be referred. 